The year is 1992, and DOS computers are still pretty boring. Then comes it Software's landmark first-person shooter Wolfenstein 3D, violently blowing away everyone and their Nazi friends to bits with guns, guns, and more guns. So in 1993, everyone starts to predictably jump onto the Wolfenstein clone bandwagon. Then comes it Software's landmark first-person shooter Doom, violently blowing away everyone and their demon friends to bits with guns, guns, and more guns. Aw, oh, but what about the poor Wolfenstein clones? They don't stand a chance now. Well, that's just too bad. They're lame. Who cares? By Doom or John Romero, we'll eat your face. Yeah, that really happened. Well, more or less, anyways. And one of the casualties of Doom's explosive release was Corridor 7, Alien Invasion, released in 1994 by Capstone Software and their subsidiary Intracore Incorporated. And contrary to the title containing a numerical value, it is not the seventh game in a series, but rather the first and only game. Go figure. It's a Wolfenstein clone in the truest sense, as evidenced by this misguidedly proud sticker on the front of the box. Capstone Software was one of those companies that was known for, well, not really a whole lot at that point. I guess Wayne's World, Miami Vice, and Operation Body Count, and I wouldn't exactly label those everlasting classic computer games, but then they came out with Corridor 7, and it seems to have stood the test of time somewhat better than their previous titles, at least judging by the opinions I've read online. We all know how trustworthy those are. In Corridor 7, you witness the grim future of the year 2012. where a team of United States scientists, and not scientists from anywhere else, mind you, return from Mars with a metallic alien object. It's about to be studied in a lab called Corridor 7, but it turns out it's actually a gateway that opens up our world to invasion. Everyone dies, your humanity's only hope, blah blah freaking blah blah. It's one of the oldest sci-fi stories in the book of old sci-fi stories. This version of the game comes on two three and a half inch high density floppy disks, but this is just the first release. I'll be reviewing the CD-ROM version because it's the exact same game, except that it's enhanced with CD audio, multiplayer, more difficulty levels, more guns, more enemies, and ten new maps, and a lot more awesome, so yeah, it's an obvious choice. The game starts off with some title screens, and an animated introductory video showing the story of the game so far. We've uncovered something. Looks like an alien artifact. Lightsaber sound effects? Seriously? I thought the artifact came from Mars, not a galaxy far, far away. You are then greeted with the main menu, where you can start, load, and continue a game, as well as adjust the options, view high scores, and pull an Elvis by leaving the building. Starting a new game provides you with four difficulty levels ranging from easiest to hardest, naturally, as well as various multiplayer options for playing over a modem or a network. There is also a mode called President, which is a unique difficulty mode that randomizes the placement of items and enemies, assuring that you experience a slightly different game every time you play. I highly recommend choosing something other than the easiest mode, and you'll see why in a minute. Starting the game, you're dropped right into Corridor 7, the lowest level of the Delta Base facility, surrounded by electric fences and holding some basic guns. The goal of the game is to make it to the end of the level and stay alive to the game's conclusion by blowing away aliens and navigating hallway mazes. It's a Wolfenstein game. Pretty much the same as any old-school first-person shooter, and actually the same as most modern shooters, too. But the biggest difference here is that you won't be going around collecting key cards or trying to find the exit. No, the goal of every level is to kill enough aliens to consider the level secure, and then ride the elevator to the next level. If you're on the easier difficulties, you don't even have to kill all of the aliens. You can just kill one or two dudes and breeze through the level. That's no fun to me, so if you even want a hint of a challenge, choose a higher difficulty. It's also worth noting that there are no key cards at all, but instead you have computers which unlock either red or blue doors in the level. 
The rest of the time you are simply navigating the corridors, trying to stay alive while mapping the place out if you so choose. This is done by the map on your heads up display and is crucial to an enjoyable game. This is because it not only reveals nearby aliens, but the level designs are pretty much what you would see in a hedge maze. Lots of dead ends and winding pathways that lead absolutely nowhere, and nearly all of the walls look the same. I mean, sure, there are some cool decorations here and there, and the animated and transparent textures are cool, at least for a Wolfenstein engine game. But I'm not gonna lie, it starts getting repetitive really fast. Thankfully, the industrial sounding music is pretty freaking cool, at least with the CD-ROM version's CD audio. The floppy version does have ad-lib music at least, and while it's decent, it just isn't the same experience as the CD version's crisper beats. Combined with the darkness in the distance and the occasional creepy alien that pops up behind you, Corridor 7 is actually quite an awesomely atmospheric game. In fact, on some occasions, I'd say it rivals Doom in terms of creepy atmosphere, although you're not going to be seeing any glimpses of hell or tortured souls or anything like that. Though occasionally you will see this pop out in front of you. <laughs> I don't like that thing. I'm not even sure what it is. I've heard some people say it's a hallucination. Whatever the case, it's friggin' creepy, and I can imagine as a kid this scaring the dookie out of me. It gets even crazier once you get the night vision and infrared visors. Night vision is pretty much what you would expect, allowing you to see the lurking danger in dimly lit areas. Infrared is friggin' awesome, though, and lets you see some of the deadlier aliens, which are invisible to the naked eye. Plus, it makes me feel like I'm a Terminator, and that's always a good thing. Speaking of the aliens, there are about a dozen of them throughout the game, and while most of them are grunts of varying difficulty, there are a few that really stand out, namely the aforementioned invisible aliens, an alien which can take the form of another alien once it's killed, and an alien that can temporarily shapeshift into inanimate objects, like plants and chairs thoroughly unnerving. They also seem to be a bit smarter than enemies and other shooters of its time. Like when you make a bunch of noise blowing away an alien, some of its friends in nearby rooms will give up their closet monster status and come after you like an angry mob. Thankfully, you have a decent arsenal at your disposal, including several military weapons like a taser, shotgun, machine guns, and mines. But there are also the stronger alien guns, which are powered by energy cells instead of traditional ammo, and really come in handy on the later levels against the tougher aliens. In somewhat of an odd design choice, the weapons of similar type actually share ammunition. So if you use up all of your chain gun ammo, for instance, you're also out of shotgun ammo as well. In addition to all these weapons for fighting the aliens, you also have health packs, ammo refill stations, health recharge chambers, body armor, and more to aid you on your lengthy alien hunting excursions. And therein lies my main issue with Corridor 7, the length. Normally it's a compliment when a game gives you lots of gameplay, and this was especially the case back in the day for most PC games. I mean, the longer the better, right? But I'm sorry, Corridor 7, you just have too many freaking mazes. Too many corridors, too many of the same aliens, too many collecting of the same items and security clearances, too many elevators, wash, rinse, repeat, with not much to change things up in between. And honestly, I also think Wolfenstein 3D has this issue somewhat. The mazes just get old and repetitive, and the nature of the gameplay and the level designs just start to grind on me. The game's still kind of cool for maybe six or seven levels, but it just keeps going. Now, this is definitely a personal complaint, but I felt it was worth mentioning because it does discourage me from going back and playing it or recommending it to other people. Not sure it does have that randomized difficulty mode, which helps, but it doesn't do anything to change the same old, same old maze levels that are all over the place constantly. When a game doesn't change things up enough to stay interesting, I can't help but take issue with that. Although somebody thought it must have been good enough, because a sequel titled Corridor 8 Galactic Wars was planned and even entered the prototyping stage. It was going to use the same build engine as Duke Nukem 3D, and the designers ended up using sprites from Doom as placeholders for the prototype. But it never saw much progress, much less a store shelf, and was cancelled as Capstone Software went under in 1996. So is Corridor 7 Alien Invasion worth checking out? 
While it does at least have a very nice atmospheric tension going on, as well as some cool ideas like the shapeshifters, infrared mode, and the randomized difficulty level, I wasn't able to test the multiplayer capabilities, but it sounds like it's just pretty standard deathmatch fare for the most part, so if you like the guns and the shooting style, it might be fun. It controls well enough, the gameplay is traditional and makes sense, and the difficulty can be punishing, but it's approachable. But it just didn't stay very fun for a very long time to me, mainly because I feel the need to complete a game once I've really gotten into it, and after a while it just all started to blend together and aggravate me. So if you enjoy classic first-person shooters, I'd at least give it a shot to see what you think. But personally, I feel that when you boil everything down, it's just another decent enough to be acceptable shooter from the Doom era. Um.